If I told you guys I woke up at 9, I started training at 11, I finished training at 1.30, jammed home, had a banana, an acai bowl, and uh, jumped in the shower, got here at 2.30, recorded till what, 4.30? Something like that? Four, no, a little bit later. 5.30. 5.30. Headed to IMC, taught martial arts, then taught game, then, no, no, taught game, taught martial arts, taught game, taught martial arts again, then had rehearsal for a Pearl event. You were there right now, you saw all that. Then I finished, and I said, I'll see you here. And here I am. It's a cut a day, huh? And I have a lot of energy. Give me one crack, huh? I'm ready. All right, we're going. Action? Okay. We're going to get into the elements of storytelling, all right? And why is storytelling important? Well, because, first of all, I see your life as a story. You see? Uh, when when uh, we're talking about this subject of pickup, when a girl goes to a movie and she falls in love with, with Edward Cullen, the character from Twilight, he's a vampire character, or she falls in love with uh, Jacob Black, which is the werewolf, his counterpart. She's falling in love with his story also. If you ever had a, a character that you grew up with, like a superhero or a movie or whatever, the character had a story that captured you plus whatever power they had. Otherwise, there's enough superpowers to go around. But it was that superhero, maybe the tri uh, trials and tribulations and stuff like that that happened. So storytelling is very important. In fact, when she talks about you, she would like to tell your story to her friends. You see, oh, he this, he that, blah, blah, blah. He's doing this, he's doing that. That's a lot cooler than I'm dating some really good looking guy, some hot guy. I'm dating a really hot guy who is whatever, this and this and that, and that's his future, and that's his past, and I'm involved in his present. I'm the one who kind of took him out of his past. I see myself in his future. That's a story, okay? So the elements of a story is past, present, future. It has to have the pieces of it. But what if you're telling a story of something that happened? There's no future in it. Even if it's something that happened, it starts with something, it progresses through time, something happens, it ends. You have to have that in your story. So let's take a real life story um, of mine, let's see. Okay, so today, we're talking about today. I have to answer this, because let's just take what happened today, which is past, it's done, right? I'm not going into the future, but watch how it starts. Um, it's not the most exciting story. I'm just going to show you the, the three pieces. I get up this morning and I know I have to train. And it was going to be a very, very hard training for me today because I had a real important talk with my coach yesterday. It, I just knew today was going to be one of the, the toughest, most intense days of my life in martial arts, right? So I get up and that's in my mind as I'm showering, I'm, I'm eating, just making sure it's the right amount of food, make sure my body's warm, stretched, ready all the way up. Anyways, go to the fight. Uh, do my thing, I do really well, and then I know I have to come here and do an interview with uh, Miss Amber Jordan. You should punch her up online, especially if you are just watching me. Look who that is. And I knew that had to be the most incredible interview I've done, right? It had to top all the other interviews because it's the most recent one, and she's a very high, high, high value uh, person, and I didn't want to be lagging on that shit. Arrive here, do an incredible, it was like an hour and a half, two. We did two separate things. We did Second Karma. Secret Diaries, do you see that one? And, uh, you know, she's in her lingerie, it's just, it's unreal. We finish that, go work out, uh, teach, flying over there, forgot to eat, girlfriend brings me uh, a hamburger on the way, she's like, you have to eat, I'm like, okay. Then we gotta do the striptease, practice for uh, next weekend, uh, for the show I'm doing. We do that, and through this whole thing, there's something going on in my mind. The fight that I had this morning, is playing. I don't know if you ever had a thought that just keeps going, even as I'm teaching. I think part of the reason why I haven't slowed down all day is my mind is still fighting. My body's still in that mode. I haven't. I hope I can sleep tonight because I had to prepare for this fucking thing, right? Okay. And now here we are. Boom. All right? Not the greatest story. I could have made it dhv and really sharp. I just wanted you to see that it had a morning, it had a middle, it had a where we are right now. Anything you tell, any story, has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, in the middle, it has to rise. Okay? There has to be a high point to this shit. So the problem with stories is when guys are talking to girls, they miss it. It's almost like if you went to a movie or you went to a theater 
or you're listening to a song and the song is just monotone mm. for minutes on. Yeah. Of course, you tune it out. So what's the point? What's the point of your story? Well, the point of your story should be to create some kind of an emotional state in her. Done. That's it. It's not for her to understand you. She's never going to fucking understand you. Go to a fucking therapist and talk to them every fucking day for the rest of your life. They still don't get you. Right? So that girl surely is not going to get you in the next hour. Right? But you want her to be feeling certain emotions when she's around you. So, let's go over the interview we have today uh, with Amber. Spontaneousness, ex excitement, adventure, intellectual stimulation. It's some of the things she seeks, right? Which is common. After you do a bunch of these interviews, you see, this is uh, what Royalty was saying today behind the camera. He goes, you just start to see kind of like the same answers show up. Yeah, that's what happens when you hang out with a lot of beautiful girls. You get it. It's like the same girl, the same girl, the same girl, right? Different set of boobs, different set of ass, different hair. That's still very similar too. And it's like the same, that's why game works. Because the hot girls have a very similar response. Tiny differences here and there. So if you're talking to her, or if you're talking to someone like that, you want to have a sense of adventure. So you're going to talk about an adventure. You want to talk about travel. Every girl I know is into travel. 100%. If she's hot, she likes travel. That's it. I've never met a hot girl that's like, I don't like traveling. It's kind of weak. She loves travel. So I'm going to talk about things that, in my story, bring out in her those states of mind, of traveling, of adventure, of spontaneousness. Oh, you know, hey, you know what's really crazy? You just said something, you said something reminded me of it. We're driving the other day, right? This, okay, I was, this was uh, an ex-girlfriend relationship. This was not, uh, it's like a two exes back, right? So we're driving and it started to rain, right? But it was kind of like warm rain because it was cold. It wasn't cold, it was warm, you know? And uh, it's crazy, but it's like, it was one of the most incredible um, experiences I've ever had. So check this out, we, we pull over in this like side road. There wasn't that many cars there at all. And I was kind of like worried, but I was like, come on, what's going to happen, right? And I said, get out for a second. So we got out and it's warm rain. And she was kind of adventurous. She was like, I can't get my hair wet, you know? And, and I understand when it's like that, but, you know, we were just out. We weren't like, you know, all dressed up and shit. And I threw on the um, front of the car, the, the hood, and we had sex in the rain in the front bumper. Okay. Now, where did I get that story from? I got this from one of my friends who told me that's her fantasy. She told me, I said, what's your ultimate fantasy? What would be the greatest fantasy you ever had? She said, having sex on top of a hood of a car in the rain. And I asked her, how would it happen? Oh, we would get out, he'd tell me to get out, we'd fuck, and then he'd throw me on the hood, and he'd have sex, turn my clothes off, and have sex with me. And so now that's been downloaded into my mind. And I would like to try this story and see how it goes. But I do know it's an exciting story. I can't imagine telling a girl that and her not going through the emotion. It was an ex-girlfriend. Okay, now, I think she told me it's a part of a movie called The Notebook, she thought. So I have to make sure it's not exactly that part of the movie or I change it up a little bit. Maybe we didn't have sex on top of the hood. You know, maybe we got out, it was raining, and we had sex on the side of the road or something. In this, I don't know, I don't know, fuck it, I just made that shit up right now. Okay? as an example of the emotion she would feel when I'm talking to her. Now, here's another thing, right? I tell her, well, I really want you to understand me. You know, I really, I, I like A, B, C, D. I don't like A, B, C, D. Who gives a fuck? Boring, dude. If you're going to say that, make sure it has some relevance, some excitement. If it's a story, a story you're telling, the story has to create emotion. Disney, Walt Disney, Right? Every story takes you through this emotional ride. That's what you want to create. Otherwise, don't tell a story. <laughs> so if you ask me, what's a very important piece of a story? Well, what stories do you enjoy? Take a look. What are the elements that you enjoy in it? Okay, good. Now, that's if you talk to a dude. All right? Universally, whether you're a man or a woman, the story has to take you through emotions that you enjoy. You want to experience those emotions. Great. What about a female? Well, check out romance novels. Check out what's the most popular movie or the most popular character that they have crushes on. That's your story. 
similar Juliet to Twilight, the movie right now, which doesn't look like it, but it is. Come from two separate clans, can't be with each other, to death do us part bullshit, blah, blah, blah. So what if that happened to you? you know, what if that happened to you? What if that was your ex? You know, what if that was your first love? What if that was your first love? And it was the coolest shit because, you know, you were in junior high, whatever, and, uh, uh, yeah, you know what's crazy? I got this email the other day from this girl. She was like my first, she's like my first real, real crush. Like real. It was so cute. We were in sixth grade and um, I had such a crush on her. Like when she would walk by, I would just get this feeling like, you ever get that feeling when you're just like someone walks by or someone, you're talking to somebody and you're, you trust them and you're uplifted and you feel good? Okay, this is all language patterns right now I'm throwing out. Okay, yeah, so anyways, her and I, we were so young, and it was like, I, she would come and sit next to me in class and talk to me, but there was a problem. Her parents were really religious, and they wanted her to date a, whatever the fuck it is. And they were like adamant about it. Even though we were really young, they didn't want her to hang out with me, because they knew she had a crush on me. Now, a lot of boys liked her in school, and my friends were always like, oh, she's always talking. I'm doing pre-selection, blah, 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 the forbidden love. Okay, forbidden love until we were at a dance. And some dude was really bothering her. It was her like, second dance, Sadie Hawkins, or whatever the fuck the fucking dance was. And then you were just like, no, fuck this. The guy's much bigger, but you don't care. So you walked up to him, you tapped him, he turned around, and you headbutted him in the nose. Because that's the one thing your big brother, your dad, your uncle sh showed you, or the movie, or the boxer, or whatever the fuck. And you headbutted him, and then you got your ass beat. But the dude came back to class with the fucking uh, little nose cast that they had. And every time you look at him, you just get this pride of this smile, you know. Good. That's a story. All this shit is just being sped out right now, okay? Whatever your own personal life is. So, let me go over uh, some pieces. Storytelling. What makes a great story? It makes a great story when it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it takes you through an emotional roller coaster. You're, you're experiencing emotions. A guy can tell you, right? Talk to a pickup artist. He can be like, yo, I hooked up with this girl. Are we still recording? He can tell you, I hooked up with this girl. She was so hot. She was a model. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Or he can take you through the steps, piece by piece. You have to unlock it. Piece by piece. Okay? She came in. This is what she looked like. This is what she smelled like. At first, I didn't know if it was going to get me on or whatever. I touched her knee. You know, it was like really smooth and she just lotioned it and I could smell her hair and her lips were all glowing and she, now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. And then, you know, people left the room and she came in, she shut the door, she sat on me. She sat on you? No, yeah, like, like that. And I was like, holy shit, you know? And then she like grabbed my head, pulled it back and she, yeah, all right, tell us a fucking story, dude. Because you're getting to experience those pieces. That's the same as she was really, same story as she was really hot model. She, you know, came on to me. Fucking deal. A great story has a beginning, middle and end. It takes you through an emotion. How to create a story. It's really simple. Take something that's happened to you. Something that you've seen. Something that you connect with. Internalize it. And when you tell it, this is vital. This is vital as a good storyteller. You have to be seeing it yourself. You have to be hearing it yourself, smelling it, feeling it. You have to go through the emotions, sensations as you tell the story. If you say, when I touch her knee, you have to touch her knee in your mind. If her knee was smooth and soft and lotion, you better feel that when you do that. When she sits on you and you smell her perfume, you have to take a moment and do that. That creates a different emotion in front of you. So when you're telling her about something, when you say the rain was warm outside and you know we got out and it was the, you know warm rain and it was kind of just um, it's like it's comfortable. I don't know if you've been in a warm rain, you feel kind of like hugged, like like someone's holding you. I have to feel like someone's holding me. 